How you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome to 8-Bits in the Basement for the very first episode of 2022. And I didn't make a Christmas special last year. I didn't make one the year before either. So I hope you all had a very, very happy Christmas. And let me take this opportunity to wish you a joyous and prosperous new year to come. So what I'd like to do today is just show you this, the Atari 7800 that I picked myself up as a Christmas present to myself. Now it was sold for parts or for repair on eBay and generally I wouldn't buy a system like this unless I thought I could fix it. But as you can see here there was a sticker on it that says it's semi out of order and that Asteroids is working. So what that says to me known a little history of this unit is that the later versions of the Atari 7800, European versions at least, had a copy of Asteroids installed on the motherboard which meant that if you powered it on with no cartridge in the slot you could play Asteroids. So if Asteroids is functioning, it means that pretty much everything on the motherboard should be functioning. The graphics chip, the sound that's controlled by the TIA chip, and also the little processor and whatever memory is in it should all be working just fine. Okay, so we'll take a look at the unit as it came to me. So it's a little bit scuffy and dirty. It's going to need a little cleanup. But you see up here is the cartridge slot. And this guy will accept either Atari 7800 or Atari 2600 cartridges. There's a nice little kind of aluminium or aluminium type of badge going across here that has Atari embossed and it has 7800 written on a kind of rainbow uh, stripe. Down the bottom what we have are four buttons. We've got our power button, our power indicator led, our pause button, our select button and our reset. And looking at the very front of the unit, there are two joystick ports. So we've got two DB9 ports for player one and player two. And then there are two switches which control player one difficulty, easy and hard, and the same for player two. Around the back of the unit, what we have is we have a little power port which takes nine volts DC current. But it's a kind of uncommon connector, so I'm going to have to make up something special to try and fit into that. And over here, there is a 13 pin uh, DIN socket that that gives a red, green, blue SCART signal out to a TV. And the reason for that is this is actually a French system. So it's set up for red, green, blue SCART. On the bottom of the system, then we've got our little label here, which says it's an Atari model number 7800 and Paratel, which is the French for SCART. And it's been made in China. It's got its serial number and it's also got a little QC quality control past sticker. There are five screws holding the whole thing together. There's two here on top and there's three across the bottom of it. And this guy here is usually covered by a warranty seal, but it's after being removed in this case. So what I did was I removed the five screws. Now, so our five screws are after being removed. So let's see how to open this. We can remove this top cover. There we go. And this here is our unit underneath, it would seem. There's a lot of RF shield in there. Is that held in with any screws? Oh no. Shielding is just... Okay, hang on. Okay, well that comes out like that. Right. Somebody's definitely been at this system. Yeah, there we go. It was just held in place with one little tab. Now... All right, there we go. Yeah, now that's after being taken off before. So these guys would usually pass through the motherboard here and pass into the slots here. And then they would be bent over to keep everything in place. But somebody has previously removed that to get down to this little motherboard here. So the very first thing that we want to try and do with this is to get power into it to see that it's actually working. To see if we can get this little LED to light and maybe see if there's any activity on any of these chips here. So what we need to do is we need to feed 9 volt at 1 amp into this little plug here. But as I said before, I don't have anything that will plug into that. However, I did have a little look around in my spares box and I came across these. I had a whole bag of these little guys here and I don't know exactly what they're called. But I found that it will plug in there pretty much perfectly. And uh, it can't plug in the wrong way around because it's slightly keyed. 
So once I have that wired up the way it should be, I can plug that in safe enough without fear of reverse and por polarity. So really what I need to do is I need to use this little adapter that I have here. Now this is an adapter that I kind of put together a couple of years back for my Atari 2600. And it's exactly the same voltage and all that this guy needs. It's nine volt at one amp. However, the difference is the Atari 2600 uses a three and a half millimeter audio jack to supply power. So what I needed to do was find a way to transfer the power from this to this. And the easiest solution I came up with was to use a female three and a half millimeter audio jack. And I just uh, soldered two wires onto it so that I could get ground through one wire and I could get my nine volt through the other wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in here and now we'll try and determine which of these wires is positive and which is negative or which is plus 9 volt and which is ground. So we'll start off, we'll put the red to the red and the black to the black here to see is it wired up that way. So when I touch those, I am getting a positive 9 volts. It's kind of all over the place because I'm not very well touched to it. There we go. So I'm getting a positive nine volts and what that means is that the red cable here is nine volts and the black one is ground because if i touch these around the opposite way in that i touch the black to the red here and red to the black i should get a negative nine volts there we go well ish you know, touch it properly yeah i get negative nine volts there so if you touch your probes to um, two poles in a circuit like that to try and figure out which is positive and negative. If you're getting a negative whatever voltage, it means that the positive probe is touched to the negative terminal and a negative probe is touched to the positive terminal. So that's how you can determine without really knowing which is which. What we want to do now is we want to figure out which of these two pins is ground and which is nine volt so that we can connect the power in correctly to this board without blowing anything up. So the easiest way to do that is you see that these two pins here, these two guys here, come out on the board here. So while we're touching the ground plane here in continuity mode on a multimeter, only one of these two should beep. And one that beeps should be ground. And that's the one that we will connect to the black wire of our little cable that we made up. So I'll put this guy into continuity mode and we'll see which one beeps there we go so it's this pin here is our ground line that one there is our nine volt line so what that means is that our ground is here and our positive or our nine volt is this pin Plug you here in there oh we have power did you notice that Okay, so it's powering on. We've got power coming into the board and it seems to be working. Okay, so so far we've got power coming into this board. Now what we want to do is see if we can get it to put a picture on screen. So what I'm after doing to test this nice and quickly is I've got an RCA connector here that will go to the AV port on the back of the TV. Now I've got two cables running off it. I've got a black cable that's going to the outer ring and I've got a yellow cable that's going to the center pin on the RCA connector. And the black wire there, I'm going to connect to the ground plane on the Atari 7800. And then the yellow one, I'm going to switch between various little pins on the back of this TV out connector. And uh, I might be able to get an image on screen, but that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll explain it a little more as I go through the test. So we'll get to that right now. Now, so I'm after getting myself set up. I've got my RCA cable plugged into the back of the TV here, and I'm after plugging it into pin two, which is the synchronous output on the RGA port on the back of the unit here. So if it works like little Leningrad Spectrum clone worked, I should get a black and white image on screen when I power on. So we'll see at least is the system working in some shape or form. So here we go. No. <laughs> oh, we ain't got nothing. We still got no signal on that. So we'll power her down. We we'll see what happens now. So 
The next option that I said we had was to see if maybe it would work like the Canon, the V20, the MSX system I had, whereas connecting to any of the uh, color ports would give a signal on screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try switching over to pin 6, which should be our red output. And we'll see if we get anything on screen on this. Oh, we do. Oh, we've got, oh, excellent. This is, this is brilliant. Yeah, so we've got, that looks to be asteroids to me. We've got a big kind of bouldery thing and we've got what looks like a spaceship. And okay, it's dancing all over the screen, but who cares, because it's working. And um, yeah, what this means is that the board is working. That we have anything that looks like anything at all means it's working because at the end of the day, we've only got one signal coming out. We've got no sync in there or anything. We've just got the color signal and we've got a dancey picture. So what are so that means that what we can do is um, we're not wasting our time if we make up a cable because the system is working. So I will, I think, belt on ahead and make up a little red, green, blue cable to plug into the back of that. And then we'll test it on a little further and see if um, if the joysticks and all that kind of thing works. So this is this is very, very promising. <laughs> Okay, so here's a little deviation I've taken that I thought you might find maybe interesting. I was going through my parts bin, getting a few bits and pieces together to make the SCART cable for this system. And I remembered that a little while ago I had done a modification on a Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, somewhat the same, it had a little board in it as well to convert composite to RGB. And there was a little mod you could do to turn it back into composite. And it used a little transistor, a 2N4401, to amplify the signal and give you a color picture on screen. So I said, seeing as it only takes like five minutes to put that thing together, I would try it on this board. So I fished around a little bit here to see if I could find anything at all resembling a composite signal. And lo and behold, I did. I found, uh, I found with the multimeter, not choosing anything else, just a multimeter, a signal that was about 1.2 volts. So I figured that might be composite. So I tried connecting into it to see what I would get. And this here is what I got. Now, so you see, we now have a clear signal, although <laughs> the mod hasn't worked at all. It's in black and white, but you can still see what's going on and it will allow us to test out these buttons. The second one here, for example, is a pause button. And I think there's a reset and there's a select button as well or something. But there we go. So we can see that it's working properly. And I figured what we do as we have it this far along, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it at this point, although we don't have color or we don't have sound for the moment. I'm going to test it at this point and we'll see if the joystick ports are working. And we'll also see because the vendor said that it was just asteroids that was working on it, that this port here wasn't working at all. So we will stick a cartridge into that and see if that works as well. And what I'll do after all that, if we have everything going fine, is then I'll make up the cable and we'll finish up the video, hopefully with a nice little color picture on screen. So we'll carry on from here and we'll see if the stuff is working or not. Okay, so I'm after plugging in this joystick here, we'll power on and we'll see if the joystick port is working on this. So asteroids is up on screen. The ship is there, it's turning left and right, and the fire button is working. If I push back the way, I'm teleporting around the screen, which is what this is supposed to do. And if I push forward, I go forward. So joystick port on that seems to be working. Uh, I don't know how to select two player on this thing. It doesn't appear that I can. So for the moment, I don't have any way of testing the second joy port. But what I will do, although the vendor said that the uh, cartridge port wasn't working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this little multi-cart that I made up a while back and we'll see if it works with it or not. So they said it wasn't working. So what I'll do is I'll just put it in and out a few times. Let's see if that cleans it up maybe. It appears to be working to me. There we go. That there looks to be working. And again, the same thing. This game is Space War. It's actually probably a fairly good game to test out this kind of thing with because it's simple enough. Um, forward makes us go forward. Left and right makes us go left and right. And the pushback doesn't teleport us, but it makes us go invisible for a little while. And fire makes us fire. Although this is 
uniquely a two-player game, which means that I should be able to test out this joy port as well. So for the second guy, we're moving around, we're able to go forward, we're able to go invisible as well, and our fire button is working too. So it seems to me, actually, <laughs> it seems to me that if I can make up a cable for this that'll give us color on screen, ignoring that this is garbled here on top, for whatever reason, um, if I can make up a cable that'll give us color on screen, uh, I should have a fully functioning 7800 unit. So uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. And then we'll have a little play around a bit. Huh? To see, there's not much more I can really test out on that for the moment. So we'll see. I'll make up that cable and we'll see how all that goes. Okay, so we're after getting power into the system. We know that the system can put a black and white image on screen. So what I've done is I've completed the last piece of the puzzle. I made up the little SCART cable that should give us sound and color on screen. So I've plugged one end of it into the TV, but on the other end, I didn't have a 13 pin male DIN connector that I could plug in to the back of the Atari. So I've just shoved the bare wires into the female DIN socket on the back of the unit. And it's not perfect, but it should be enough to let us know if it's working or not. So when I power on, I should get a color image on screen. Okay, there we go. It starts black and white. And then after a couple of seconds, we get a color image on screen. So that appears to be working away just fine. And um, we know the power button's working. The second button pauses the game, which is what it's supposed to do. The third button resets and the fourth button resets as well which is strange but that's that's the way it is anyway what we will do next because this here is a 7800 game so this game is actually using the maria chip to output the image on screen and we've got a color image using the maria chip so that's great now if we use an atari 2600 rom it won't use the maria chip it'll use a whole dip different circuit that uses the tia chip television interface adapter to put an image on screen so it can happen in some cases if there's a fault that you'll have a color image using a 7800 cartridge but a black and white image using a 2600 cartridge so what i'm going to do is i'm going to shove in this little modified pal version of et that i created and we'll see if we get a color image on screen with it so we're black and white once more and it turns the color. So the TIA chip is working properly as well with this. So it seems we've got a working system here. If I start the game, uh, yeah, we've, we've got colors on screen. It's not at all like the, like the CCAM version I have where the colors are all screwed up. Uh, the beauty of this little modified version is that I don't fall in the holes all the time. You see that? And the other thing, it's made slightly easier because the health bar on the bottom doesn't go down constantly when I'm running around. And uh, I can also set it with an extra difficulty setting that'll make scientists and stuff not come after me. So it just makes it just makes the game more fun, a little bit better to play. And I may do a video if you'd like to on creating a, um, a cartridge like that. But what I'm going to do now, because I'm happy enough that this is working properly, is I'm going to button it back into its plastic casing and we'll just wrap up the video from there. Now, so I'm happy enough. I've got myself a partially functioning Atari 7800. And why do I say partially functioning? Well, you remember earlier on when I was pressing the select and reset button, they were both operating exactly the same way. They were both resetting the game of asteroids. And that's not normal. And I discovered that after about five minutes of the system being powered on, suddenly the select button started working as a select button i could select different modes of play and two player and one player games and i think the reason for that is the capacitors inside in this system are starting to go so um what i'll do is i'll change out those capacitors and hopefully that should make it work again now also i say partially functioning because you'll remember that it was semi-faulty is the way it was sold in that asteroids was working but the cartridge slot wasn't now having a look inside in the cartridge slot i discovered that there's one little pin that seems to be a little bent it's probably not making contact if you put a cartridge in but it's one of the pins that's only used 
if you're using an Atari 7800 cartridge. It's not at all used for the 2600 cartridges. So it's possible that the person that sold this only had 7800 cartridges, and that was the reason why it wouldn't work for them. Now, I have no way of testing that, because I don't have any 7800 cartridges, but if ever I get one or two, I'll check it out and we will see. So um, yeah, apart from that, I'll change capacitors, give it a little clean up, and it should be absolutely fine after that. So listen, if you've stuck with me this long, thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like content like this, why not click the subscribe button down below? Otherwise, give us now a thumbs up or a comment is always appreciated and I'll always try and answer any comments that I get. So anybody, anybody throughout the year who has left a comment, given a thumbs up or subscribed to the channel, thank you very, very, very much. And I wish you all a very, very happy 2022. So until the next episode, we'll talk to you all soon. I'll be waiting for you here in the basement. Bye bye.